Hi everyone, it's Denise with Wonderbird Crafts. Welcome back to the channel and welcome any new subscribers. Uh, <laughs> this is my second attempt on this video. I had two other videos and for some reason those videos blanked out halfway through. Hopefully this won't be an issue, but the last video I don't I kept bumping the camera with the because I keep forgetting it's there in front of the machine. <laughs> yeah, it's been a day. Trust me, I, I almost gave up and said, forget it, I'm just going to go lounge around on the couch, but no, nope, I'm determined I'm going to get some videos done. So, <laughs> well, I told you it has been a crazy week. If you have watched my first video, you know, I had all those issues with the shipping. And then yesterday, <laughs> All I can do is laugh. All I can do is laugh. But better to laugh than to be all bent out of shape, right? So in the one video that um, got blanked out, um, I had did a process and showed you how I cut these down. So my next journal, I will I will definitely do a video and show you how I cut those all down. I've done one before um, on when I marked them with the pencil and cut them. And I like to do that if I want my edges sometimes to be a little ruffly or whatever, I can do it that way. But these ones I wanted a little more straight. And then I did a video where I kind of added some more stuff in here um, and inked the top. I used the archival um, faded jeans on top. I like that blue. Um, it kind of is a little wintry. And so that way when it goes into there, it kind of gives out a ratty, blue genie, um, wintry kind of blue on the edge of, and around the pages. So the signatures are not finished, but they're put together. So what I was attempting to do on my last video was show you guys how I make those little ruffly spines and using the sewing machine. And to show you guys, it's very simple. And if you can sew a straight stitch, you can make these spines. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> no, all, all joking aside, really, it is very, very simple. Um, so I have already stripped my pieces, but I will, I will take a couple pieces and kind of show you what I did and how I got my measurements. Um, essentially, what I want it to do is I'm going to have a bigger piece that comes off to cover this portion of the book, right? So that will go there. I had to measure this portion, which is three quarters of an inch. All right. Then I have a quarter inch gusset here. So I added it and this piece will come to here. All right. That's an inch. Now, when I sew that ruffle edge, I need a quarter inch of that. So I had to add another quarter inch. So I cut these to be, um, let's see they are an inch and a half so you've got an inch here a quarter inch that's going to be sewn to the ruffle portion and then a, a quarter inch that will hang over that will go over the top of this strip here okay so i cut two of those pieces uh an inch and a half okay so that will go here and that will go here like that all right then what I did was I had to measure the actual spine itself. This spine is uh, an inch and three quarters and I want each strip to have a quarter inch um, thickness that, that will show and then a quarter inch will come up and attach to this portion here and be the ruffle. So since they'll be sewn on both sides you have to add a quarter inch quarter inch that's half an inch and then a quarter inch strip so they will get cut into th they got cut into three quarter inch strips however to ensure that i have enough this is an inch and three quarters so if each strip is going to lay with a quarter inch i've got one two three four five six seven quarter inches so I need seven strips of fabric. 
So what I did was I have four fabrics all together. All right. And then what I did was cut each strip and then frayed it a little bit, three quarters of an inch there. And I'm going to lay these out so you'll kind of see they they won't it's going to lay out and it's going to look wider but once we sew it it's going to be it's going to shorten it up a lot so that will go like that and then that and yes it's like whoa it's going too far no you got to remember some of this it's going to it's going to shrink up when we sew it so then i took another piece of this fabric as my center and like this and then like this and we're just going to do long strips on this one now if you've seen my um my fickle fall it was similar to this um in straight strips but i did a zigzag stitch and i will do another spine like that to show you how that is done because that's a little bit of a different process um and then my last journal the christmas journal i did i did segments and i will do that one in another video also because that is that's a little bit more advanced than this but this one will just be a straight stitch I, I promise it will be so simple if you could do a straight stitch you can do this so if you're gonna do one of these like on an on a um, readers digest your measurements you'll need because they're all the spine is all the same and those um, the tape that binds the spine to the, the book plate are all the same. So what you're going to need is two pieces that are your end pieces that are an inch and a half and then seven pieces that are three quarters of an inch ripped. Now, so to show you how I did that, I, I'm going to take a piece of fabric here, okay? And one edge has already been ripped and it's already frayed. Now if you have pieces that are straight edges, all you have to do is find one of the strings and start pulling okay if you get to a point where it stops and it snags it means that there is another piece that is like a half thread down here just try and come down below where it snags and pull it and then that other string will come right out okay so i'm going to go ahead and cut this piece to three quarters of an inch and i'm just going to give it a little snip okay just a little snip here and then pull See? So, and I can always use this for something, a tag or something. So now I can just pull and fray a little bit. You know, you don't have to pull and fray too much. Um, and if you get longer pieces, that's all right. All you gotta do is just take and stick it down a little bit. Okay. It will when your fabric starts to, you know, as it as we start to sew it and it starts getting moved around and touched. See how it's it stopped right there? There's a string down here. I gotta pull it to get the other one to pull, and then it will come. Alright, and chances are because if you get a piece of fabric, and I had shown this on the other one, that sometimes is already pre-cut, they cut this slightly off so when i when i rip this one edge is three quarters of an inch and the other is a little over it's like half an inch because they when they cut this with um because this is like strips that i bought in a roll um they used pinking shears and when they cut it um it was off by a little bit so when i went to go rip it it started it got it started at the right length and it ended if that happens that's okay just take the other piece that you ripped off of that is now straight and frayed and then measure from there and cut cut it and rip it and you will get a three-quarter inch strip okay so it happens sometimes and if you if that's the only little bit of fabric you have it's okay you can make it work you can make it work okay so and then just fray your edges all the way around and then i cut these strips to be um just a little bit um they are seven and three eighths all right in length they're a little bit 
just a smidgen longer than the book. And so that way you kind of got some fringe that hangs off the top and bottom. You can cut them exactly to the book uh, length if you like. Or you can cut them shorter so that you could still see the bottom portion. It's totally up to you and how you want to you wanna do it. But these are simple. Very, very simple. So what I've done is I've laid them out just like you would lay out, you know, when you're, when you're fixing to glue something with paper. You lay it out so you can see what it's going to look like. And now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. So let me swap the camera and then move on over there. Okay, so I, I went ahead and just bought the whole book over so that you can see that's all my strips there. All right, and I've already pre-threaded my machine. I am using a 100% polyester cotton or polyester uh, blended vintage thread. It's blue. Um, I I thought it would be a very nice. In fact, I have a, like an extra little bobbin spool here. If I can show you. It's a very nice color that I thought would match well, kind of blend well with the other fabrics. So that's the color I will be using all throughout this journal when I do sewing on tags and all that stuff I'm going to I'm going to keep it to that blue. So, we're going to take an end piece, all right? Get that one little thread there. Okay? Take that end piece. And then I'm going to take my next piece. This piece right here is up. The great thing about this kind of fabric is it's been, it's like eco dyed. So it doesn't matter really what side you use, okay? But I'm just for showing purposes, if you don't have this kind, um, your fat, so if this is my, if this is my side up, my right side up, okay, I'm going to take, you can do this either way. You can um, run it backward. Oh, let me not confuse you. Let me turn it over so that it's right side down. Okay, then my next piece, I'm going to put it right side up over the top and just kind of measure it. Just kind of lay it on there so it's kind of even. doesn't have to be immensely perfect. Just try and get it on there best you can. Okay. Alright. And then I'm just going to use a straight stitch. Alright. Somehow it's okay. All right, so sorry, my needle was in twin needle mode. I don't know why, but I've got my length um, set. Normally, I would set it at four. Um, I have it set at three, a little bit smaller stitch, um, just so that because I'm ruffling, it might give just a little bit of puckering effect. Not too much because you don't want too tight, but just enough with a smaller stitch. So. Now, when we want a quarter inch, my foot, I know from the center portion of where my needle is, and I know to here is like a quarter inch guide for me. So I know that that's where my fabric needs to be. What you can do is, you, um, how you would measure it is, let me, let me find my, where did I leave my ruler? Oh, I left my ruler over there. Goodness. Okay, I gotta reach across. Sorry if I bang. Because I just want to show you guys, if you're kind of new to sewing, how this works. So, if I put my needle in the down position, and I can measure a quarter inch from where that needle is to where my foot is, because everybody's foot is different with their machine and how it's shaped, I know this is where my guide is for a quarter inch, and that's where the edge of my fabric needs to be to give me a quarter inch um, a quarter inch uh, allowance, seam allowance. So, I'm going to set that down right about there. Okay, so I got a quarter inch. And then, just a little bit. Now, you can back stitch. What I would suggest is, because your fabric is frayed, you don't want the needle to poke, poke it down into your bobbin, your bobbin pickup hole. So I would do a few stitches, then just do a 
one or two, you know, stitch back stitch, and then continue on. And I will tell you from experience, do not watch the needle go up and down. Watch where your fabric guides. This will help you do a straighter stitch. Um, if you watch your needle go up and down, because I could never figure out for the life of me when I first started quilting why my stitches were never straight. It's because I watched my needle go up and down instead of watching where my fabric was being guided. So we're just going to take it all the way down here. Uh oh. Oh, my thread broke. Mm, that's okay. We can fix that. Alright. Oops, sorry. Bumped the camera C because I'm not used to it being there. Alright. This may happen with this particular thread because it is older thread. I got this thread back when I bought this machine back in the 90s. It's a brother machine. It's a brother thread. It's made in Japan. It's a very nice thread. It's called Country Country Thread or Country Something, and I really like the thread. So and my machine does have an auto threader. It will not thread when I'm using a leather needle because it is a thicker needle. So, but <laughs> when I have a normal needle on there, it works just fine. So let me start where it picked where. If this happens, not a big deal. Just kind of start over, back up a little few stitches, and then just start over. Just do one back stitch, and you'll be fine. Okay, and then give it one, two back stitches. Take it to the end. Put your threads. Okay, so now. Get that thread there. We have got uh, an extra little thread here. Sorry, let me get back in the camera. All right. So this is where my end piece is going to be, and then because I sewed it the opposite way, you see, my little fringe is going to stick up. So now, what we're going to do. <laughs> is pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to I'm going to flip it over so that I have more to grab with with my fingers to guide with this. Doesn't matter if it's upside down, inside out, whatever. And you can kind of pull it and just kind of finger press it down if you need to to hold it in place, it will pop back up. So, I want this fringe to be up like this. And you can very easily do this. So let me turn this over so that it's upside down, right? Wrong side, the wrong side, or right side down. So wrong side up, right side up on the second piece, the next strip. And just kind of lay it on there. I have a couple pieces that might be a little bit longer and that's okay because I can always pull the threads off and fringe it and then trim the fringe if I need to cut it down. Alright, same thing, put it in my guide, a couple stitches, two back stitches, and then just straight stitch all the way down. Is it doing that again? Okay, something is catching, I think, on my bobbin and breaking my thread. So give me just a second to pull that out and take a look at that, and make sure we're okay with that. Okay, I cleaned it out a little bit. I think I might have had a piece of thread in there that was um, catching on the bobbin there. And not being very nice. So hopefully that will take care of that. Okay. 
So, snip that. All right. So now, see how I've got a quarter inch there, in there. And it's starting to give some form here. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to, same thing, lay this one down so it's face down. Okay. Finger press it out if you want. Totally up to you. This one's face up. And we're just going to repeat this process all the way through. So, yeah, like I said, I was having a very, very crazy week with the shipping issue. And then yesterday we had, uh, like, we woke up to three, four inches of snow. And my Keurig decided to break on me. Not fun. <laughs> Denise is not good without coffee. <laughs> Just a simple straight stitch, that's it. I mean, if you can sew on a tag or a page, a piece of paper, you can sew on fabric. And if you're concerned if, of whether or not you'll do it right, just take some scrap pieces of, of fabric, you know, and make some strips and just practice. You know, it's just a straight stitch, and if anything, then you'll have some little raggedy pieces that you could snip off and add the tags or whatever if you decide not to use it as, you know, that you use your practice piece on. So, there we go. we got another quarter inch in there. And now we're going to do our center piece. Same thing. This side down. This side up. Get it laid on there. And a lot of this stuff, you, like I said, you just you don't need to pin it. You can pin it if you if you feel like you need to, but you can pretty much hold it with your fingers. Looks like it slides. All you got to do is stop and just kind of tuck it back over there. Keep going. It does not have to be perfect because it's intended to be raggedy. You know. There we go. There's where to our center. Right there. And I just have a nice little ruffle edge all the way down. Simple, right? Easy, easy. But yeah, like I was saying, my um, my Keurig decided to go out, and I am an, a, an, I'm a huge coffee drinker. If I have less than four cups of coffee, there's something wrong. Because <laughs> I will typically have anywhere from four to seven cups in a day. Just depends on what kind of day I'm having. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so got up and it was, you know, it's been in, kind of sounding a little rough, but yesterday I got up and it sounded like a wood chipper. Something was caught in the pump or something, probably some coffee ground. And I do keep it clean, but, you know, I can't seem to get my son to uh, stop leaving the K-cups in there. Keep telling him when you're done, you take them out. And you threw them away, right? So, um, I ended up taking almost, because they had not plowed, we live like rural. And um, it is a highway we live off of, but it's a state highway. And it's plowed by the county. And um, they had not gotten to it yet. So, uh, yeah, it took me 30, 40 minutes 40 minutes to drive 6 miles to the highway, where it was plowed, obviously. But, yeah, just so I could go to Walmart, just so I could buy a Keurig, because there was no way 
I was not going to let him have my coffee. And then my son, he's like, no, oh, just go down to Casey's and get a cup of coffee. That way you won't have to, I still have to go get a new Keurig. I might, if I'm going to go out, I might as well just go and get it, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. Like I said, it's just been a crazy, 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 crazy week. Just make sure you don't sew your fingers, which, you know, I know some of you will go, oh, yeah, that'll be me. Yeah, well, just watch what you're doing. You'll be fine. These are so easy. I mean, simple, just strips. It's like putting strips of paper, you know, gluing strips of paper together, really. You're just use, using a sewing machine to help you put it. That's your glue. <laughs> your thread is your glue. <laughs> Think of it that way. So, so very, very, very simple. And they're fun. I mean, look, think about all the different fabrics. And if you have like some scrappies you want to use up, what you can create. You could just make strips of these and then cut them and put them on tags. Kind of like you do with a snippet roll, you know? Those would be really cute. I'm going nice and slow for you guys so you guys can see. Normally I would uh, speed up a little bit, but then the machine gets really loud. <laughs> Yeah, if your fabric starts to look like it's bunch, you just lift your foot with the needle down, lift it up, just kind of retuck back over it, and you'll be good. Oh, see, I just broke my thread again. And it could be that because this thread is very old and vintage, that it's just getting brittle. It's older thread. But it will still hold up. fabrics so no biggie see we make mistakes too of course my machine could use a really good cleaning too haven't really had time to do that normally I clean it after I use it and after a project you know before I start a new one I just didn't have time so we have some fuzz in there that need to be cleaned out really good. Alright. Two more pieces left to do. See, almost done. I love this fabric. I love the script on it. It's got like, um, it has Eiffel Tower on it and it's so soft. And I love, it's kind of like a, a, a I don't want to say burlap, but it's it's like a soft burlap, actually. Like a very soft uh, feed sack. Sorry, feed sack. And just the way that the cotton sits. And it rips so wonderfully. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I made a journal out of this. It's on my... It's in my playlist somewhere. Um, I made a journal for my niece. Allie using this. I made it a cover for her. Made a nice little uh, leather strap closure and uh, sewed most of it for her. And she's like, I love it so much I don't want to journal in it. Well, that's the whole reason why I got it for you. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, something's caught in there. So, let me, before we begin here, out. Yeah, see this thread is, see how it's fraying a little bit here. Older thread, it'll happen. Okay. We want you back there. We don't want to tangle you up. Alright. 
Okay. More to be. See, even us sewers and quilters have problems with our, our machines. It happens. <laughs> so, you know, just because you might be a beginner and think that, oh my gosh, it, it happens to everyone, you know. I could go months without not ever having props. I'm sorry, BTs are flying. I could go literally months without, um, sorry, I'm, I should have this in camera so you guys can see this being lined up here, uh, without having an issue, a single, single issue, and then just have nothing but, I mean, I had in, uh, probably a few weeks time, a few months back, the light bulb went out, then the threader, had the, there's a like a little pin in here and you can typically straight take it apart straighten it out which I have been doing for a while but it finally just bent and it the tip broke so it wouldn't push the needle through so I had to get I had to replace that and the needle and take it in and get it cleaned so yeah and I have some I have backup machines but they just I don't think they they sew fine it's just they don't, I don't have all the decorative stitching on it like I do with this one, so. Alright, let's see if we can get this lined up so I can get it sewn. Last piece, come on. Work with me. Alright. Just go slow and steady. I mean, if you're worried about it, slow and steady. you might get it picked up a little bit just pull it apart pull it out of the other threading it's not a big deal I mean <laughs> and there we go oh see I it didn't pick up here I thought that's what was going on so let me go back over that because I think I frayed that one piece a little bit too much but that's all right we're gonna fix this real quick. I need to get it over onto the actual fabric portion because I had sewn over the fringe. I didn't pick it up. It's alright. It's fringy and scrappy now, isn't it? Alright, so, there we go. There's our spine. Fuzzy, fuzzy spine. And I'm going to just play with it a little bit. So let me move back over to the other camera. Okay, let me get my light adjusted over here. Make sure I got plenty of light for you guys. Okay. So, this is our spine. It's roughly and rough. And, you know, you might have to play with it a little bit to kind of get it to, you know, fringe out. Or, you know, you finger press some of it. And So, let's do this. There we go. Yeah. And now all we have left to do is to glue it in place. That's it. And that will be the spine for this one. Simple, easy, straight stitch. I promise you guys, you can do this. If you have any questions, don't hesitate 
to, you know, um, you can get a hold of me through Etsy or leave me a message here, you know, down below. Uh, you know I'll get back with you and let you know um, if you have questions on stuff. It's so easy. I mean, just take your strips of fabric. I mean, look at the other side even. Even if you strip that like that, you could cut this and just have like a long strip of something for scrap. But even this side is awesome because you've got all this texture, you know, to kind of make like a, a raggedy roll or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. There you go. Make raggedy rolls. <laughs> so anyways, guys, um, I think the next I'm going to continue on and try and do another uh, couple videos that I had planned on doing originally. Um, and, and in the next one, we'll glue this down onto the the book page itself or the book cover itself and um, then just keep moving as much as we can hopefully this video won't screw up like the other ones <laughs> so until next time guys plenty of hugs loves and blessings Mwah. thanks for joining bye